Hey Pen Pals, this is Tom with Gold Spot Pens. For all those who follow the channel, you've seen me talk about the top five pens on goldspot.com based on sales, likes, comments, and customer reviews. In these monthly videos, I always disclaim that the list is not my greatest of all time list. If you haven't already guessed it by the title of this video, this is my top five list. So at number five, we have a pen that is actually my oldest because it's my first $100 or more pen. It's over 10 years old. It's an Edison Herald. It was a custom commission back when Brian Gray was doing just only custom pens and back when he was doing them out of essentially his garage, live streaming them on the internet. And for something that's 10 years ago or so, that's kind of like really cutting edge. I mean, this, you know, it happens all the time now, but um, this Edison Herald was one of his first uh, production uh, type of models. I mean, they did, they did make these into like retailer type productions, but then um, the little things were changed about it. So he's always curious to see how his originals are holding up after such a long period of time of being used. So one of the things I really like about this pen, other than the fact that I got this uh, I got to pick my own custom acrylic for the pen, is the fact that this number six size Yovo nib is really easily swappable. It just turns right out of the section and then you could swap it with any other Yovo number six size nib. So if you've had custom work done on a number six size nib, or if you've gotten like a flex modified number six size nib, like I have a couple of 14 karat gold flexible uh, nibs, all you'd have to do is just put it in the housing and then screw it into the section and you've got whatever nib that you'd like on there. And that's just the great adaptability that you have for a pen that is truly a custom item. So it's just one of those things that I always looked back and I still continue to write with, with to this day because of the fact that um, it's one of the few cartridge converter pens that I have too. So it doesn't, I don't have to commit to a giant amount of ink when uh, uh, filling this pen up and has a lot of sentimental value to me so as being that first uh, really expensive purchase uh, diving into the more pricier pens that uh, I have. All right, so number four, is the Platinum 3776 Century Kumpo. And this is a special limited edition of 2018 that has a wavy teal resin body. It looks deceptively plain when you just first glance at it, but then when you start to turn it in the light, you get that impression of that um, that kind of that breeze that they talk about with the balmy breeze, which is, that's what it translates into, uh, the Kumpo. It really just has a dazzling sort of effect with this type of resin, um, that it just, there's nothing else that's quite like it. It, um, you know, has that, of course, the 14 karat gold, uh, platinum nib. I picked a soft medium for my nib, so it has a good amount of bounce and slight bit of flexibility, uh, when writing. And of course it has a cartridge converter, which I was saying is, is something that's desirable other than piston fillers to have a little bit of incapacity with it. And it also has the slip and seal cap mechanism, which is really good that keeps it nice and fresh whenever, let's say I just throw this in my bag and you know, I just don't have you know, time to write with it for a few days and then I pick it up again, it starts writing right away. This was only a 2,500 piece limited edition and it has the limited edition number engraved on the top part of like this little uh, nut that's inside of the finial that uh, has the edition uh, number on there. Then it also has a cap band that is really nicely engraved as well. It's just it's very elegant, very classy looking, but just has that modern twist of uh, these little technological parts as far as like the, the twisting of the uh, resin and also the the nice bright colors of it just so it's a very just well done understated elegant pen all right so at number three we have the omas ogiva cocktail blue angel and this is a pen that i had purchased uh, several years ago right before omas was essentially declaring bankruptcy uh, this edition had come out and uh, is extremely limited there was only 327 pieces made of each color 
there was a few other colors with this. Uh, it was a red one, a yellow one, and it was a blue. This is the blue version of it. It has a dark translucent cotton resin, of which the cap and barrel are slightly ribbed, kind of like a column, and it has a 14 karat gold extra flexibile, extra fine nib. And then this is what really makes this pen and then set it apart from everything else that I have is the flexible nib pen that's made by a modern manufacturer that writes and really gives you that nice feeling of flexibility similar to let's say a vintage type of flex um, which is really hard to achieve they also have an ebonite feed on here which keeps up that ink flow uh, which is so important for a flexible nib uh, piston fill mechanism of which uh, you know I had a heck of a time when I first had this pen. It was a very sticky piston. I think a lot of people who have Omas pens would uh, kind of sympathize with me or empathize uh, rather that uh, sometimes the pistons can be a little bit tricky. And uh, what I did was I kind of added a little bit more silicone grease and I put it on the inside there and it acts a lot more smoother now. Uh, but this is just a, such a pleasure to write with and just looks extremely beautiful and just very classy looking. And it's also one of my favorite colors in blue. All right, so number two on my list is the most recent purchase, which is the Lamy 2000 Bauhaus Limited Edition. It is a navy blue Macrolon finish with a mirror polished uh, spring loaded clip, which is unique to this particular edition. Uh, it is a piston fill mechanism with a hooded nib and a little stainless steel section that's here. Um, really, the, the big thing about this is the, the brushed sort of finish that the Macrolon has and just the, the overall uh, dimensions of it, the, the tapering, the, the fact that the section is completely smooth with the rest of the barrel. Uh, there's really only the little tabs that are here that you would feel and, and really I had held myself back from buying a 2000 for many years because it just was always available in black. But when we had gone to Germany I saw the employees actually machining these and sanding them down and taking the parts and actually working on them in the factory. I noticed that there was something different about it and I was like, that's dark blue, that's not black. And sure enough that they were coming out with this edition in a few months and I begged and pleaded. I said, please let me just take one of these off of the assembly line and I won't tell anybody, I swear. Uh, but they did not let me do that so I had to wait just like everybody else. Um, and I was really glad that I did, um, even though it is a dearly priced edition for just something that's just blue instead of black. I the thing is I had to have something other than just the regular black and you know I think that this is a good uh, investment going forward at least that's what I'm telling myself and uh, you know it's only in 1919 uh, piece limited edition um, so it is really really rare and this was something that people were just jumping on immediately as soon as it came to market despite the price um, so I think I'm pretty safe and feeling that like this eventually will go up in value uh, long after, uh, let's say I'm around. But other than just like the, the rarity of it, I just love the, the overall feel and the smoothness of this 14 karat nib is like one of the best. And one thing I really like about it being that I use ink samples a lot is that the hooded nib and where the, the part where the ink comes in is all the way towards the top where as many pens, they'll be kind of like further up the nib. So it's really difficult to get down into the cone of an ink sample and get that last bit of ink. But the 2000 really could get down there and you get that last bit of ink that's in there. And of course you've got yourself the ink window that's uh, here so you can see that I'm currently running out of uh, ink on this pen but I keep filling it back up because this is one of my favorite pens to write with. Uh, only number two to an extremely priceless to me pen that is as my grail pen and that is my number one which is the Leonardo Officina Italiana and is the Mediterranean Celluloid which I mean the this Tercese Celluloid is the thing that just it just 
it draws, it draws me to it to anything that's on it. So any pen that has had this celluloid, Monte Grappa, Delta, or anything, any time that they've had this celluloid, it always drew my eye to it, and I couldn't help myself but think like, oh, should I get that pen? Leonardo has those rods of celluloid and manufactured this pen as a limited edition, and I was like, even though the Leonardo acrylics are beautiful, I just had to have this particular type of pen because this celluloid is just amazing, and that's what I, that's where I really got it for. Um, I mean, the pen itself, uh, design of the pen is unique, and it has a sort of you know, a, a larger type of style, but it's really not like a big pen. Um, and I love the grip area, its uniqueness so as far as that, that taper and that contour that's there. The pen posted or unposted feels great in hand, has a good balance. The piston mechanism works really well on this. And of course you have a 14 karat gold nib of which I have a stub and you have an ebonite feeder which really keeps up with that wet flow of the nib. Um, so I actually just ran out of ink on this today and I've written it dry several times, uh, much shorter than I would expect to for a piston filler uh, because like I would be using it for let's say a week or so whereas normally piston fillers, let's say like the 2000, I'd be using it for several weeks off of one fill. Uh, but this lays down so much ink and it's such a wet flow that it goes through ink much quicker than a normal piston filler would. Uh, this is a limited edition of 100 pieces, so I have number 86 out of 100. And uh, just overall, it's it was one of those pens that when, when we had just initially had started with the Leonardo brand, that was kind of the reason why I was going for it. So like out of like the fact of, okay, well, you know, we want to share this, we want to import them, get them to be in everybody's hands in the United States as opposed to having to go overseas. I, I selfishly was like, well, I want a Leonardo pen and I wanted this celluloid pen as my grail pen and that uh, that was my big purchase for this year and it may not be toppled by anything else uh, for a long time to come. So there you have it, Tom's top five list of pens. Will this list change in the next year? It might. Like a bullpen of pitchers, I keep a tight roster of pens that are always in use. If something new and shiny catches my eye, it has to be worthy enough to replace one of these pens. It happened twice in the last year, so it could happen that a new pen will be on this list in the future. If you'd like to follow our monthly top five pen videos, hit the subscribe button to follow Goldspot Pens for more pen reviews, unboxings, and interviews with people from the pen community. Thank you and stay inky, my friends. Take care.